All right, everyone, Trump is now convening an emergency meeting at the UN over uh, North Korea's latest missile test. This one was slightly different. It has been deemed a likely multi-stage actual intercontinental ballistic missile as opposed to a single stage, uh, more uh, local sort of hit. Uh, it flew over towards Japan, probably landed in their territorial waters. And uh, it's worrying people because uh, North Korea only has like crude prototypes of multi-stage missiles, and now it appears that they've uh, advanced a half a level or so uh, towards getting something that could actually, yeah, it could theoretically hit Alaska. It could hit the uh, Pacific coast of the U.S. Uh, unfortunately for the North Koreans, <clears throat> it's the U.S. policy to deny them that capability, which means that if they try it again and succeed, uh, yeah, there will probably be a preemptive strike on the North Koreans. Uh, <laughs> it, would, it would level all that artillery. The DMZ would burst into flames. Pyongyang would burn. And then the peninsula would be reunified. Uh, China will not be able to shield them at this point. China is still far too weak to do so. It's not like decades ago when Stalin was still alive and the USSR and China were fundamentally in agreement because they were both communists. Uh, it's not like that anymore. China has its own sphere. Russia has its own sphere. They kind of cooperate, but then it's sometimes they have deep disagreements. Actually uh, considered going to war a few times in history. Looks more like the 70s than the 50s between those two. Um, so China, I don't, th I think they would be reluctant to risk all of their investments in East Africa, all of their partners, their partnerships in Asia, the sphere that they're building, especially a trade related sphere. I think they would be very reluctant to trade that for protect North Korea for no reason. I think at that point, the uh, Korean peninsula gets reunified. The U S would probably take a back seat and conduct strikes. That would perturb North Korea into attacking the South Koreans fearing doomsday, which means that there would be a general response. At that point, South Korea marches in, aided by the U.S. and Japan, probably other players as well. China will probably Zerg rush the northern part of the border in order to grab up some of those mineral deposits, actually. But the Korean Peninsula, by and large, would be reunited. And I'm not averse to that kind of war. We have a clearly defined state actor, not a non-state actor, which is important, number one. It's outside of the Islamic world, quite clearly. Any interference there doesn't work and hasn't for a long time. You have a ready-in-waiting culture that is fundamentally the same as North Korea, which is South Korea, with a legitimate political claim to that land that would be able to restore order. They would look and speak similarly to the North Koreans, which is important. Uh, one thing that jars people more, I think, that causes problems when there's a war, if, if the occupying force looks sort of the same and sounds sort of the same and has, you know, similar cultural trappings within its history, as is the case with these two completely the same Korean cultures, nonetheless under totally different political systems. Now, that's going to work better than if, oh, I know, a bunch of Americans march into Arabia or something like that. Just the way that things go. Uh, also, you don't really have the concept of jihad in North Korea. You might have guerrilla warfare. Some of these military groups might go off into the hills and conduct strikes. Um, it's not entirely clear they would last very long. I mean, they can't cross over in China. They would have nowhere to go. That's the only border that's actually there. And the Russians aren't going to let them in. They've got like, what, 10 square miles of border with North Korea, too, that they have to deal with. I think they've got military groups there probably at the moment watching as well. Now, even the Russians probably wouldn't do anything if we actually decided to strike North Korea. Uh, because even it's even nations that aren't hostile towards them, like Russia, don't want them having that kind of technology. Because the, wor the worry for China is this. China ta turns a blind eye when it needs or feels it needs North Korea as a buffer zone. Back when it wasn't so strong, they didn't care so much. Now the problem has grown. And now the Chinese would be reluctant to get involved because they don't want an atomic bomb being dropped on their territory. Uh, even one or two of those would still wipe out probably large numbers of troops, uh, if not necessarily civilians. The North Koreans may just deploy it along the border to kill uh, the some hundreds of thousands of men that are stationed there. So China doesn't want to deal with it. 
but will they care if the U.S. risks its air and naval assets uh, and the South Koreans march in? I don't think that they would be. Uh, but this is a little bit of a game changer. They don't have a fully, uh, fully capable uh, multi-stage uh, ICBMs at this point. They've been using single-stage rockets, uh, which have a range. They're great enough to get to Japan. They can hit South Korea. They can hit things regionally. But the, like the Taipodong 2 missile well, isn't perfected. It's like prototype mode. It's not even clear you know, that, that, that it's operative. Now they've developed something that did actually apparently work. The, the second thruster did operate as expected, although it fizzled out after a few seconds. Um, that, that, yeah, that's a problem. I don't think that Washington is going to allow that to uh, advance further. I think at, at that point, if they develop that, they may not even need to get a multi-stage nuclear weapon before the world condemns them. Because then it would just, it would just be a, a, ma a matter of figuring out how to fit an atomic warhead onto that multi-stage missile and it becomes a direct threat to a country that has been directly threatened up until now the united states couldn't really legitimately get involved in north korea because even though they've made threats to nuke us which would otherwise you know if china did that worldwide condemnation india did that worldwide condemnation the uk russia wherever it'd be condemned by everybody even the most tin horn states would condemn it now, some of them are totally anti-nuclear, by the way. It's kind of funny. But North Korea doesn't have a delivery system to get to the United States. So it's a toothless threat. That's why there's no uh, wide-reaching outrage from uh, nations like China or Russia. They don't care because they realize, well, the Americans are just, it's being hyperbolic because the North Koreans can't actually put an atomic weapon onto one of these missiles and the missiles can't even reach them anyway. Now, though, the second part of that equation is approaching the point at which the claim, if they threaten us again, would be credible. Certainly, the South Koreans and Japanese already take it seriously. I think Japan takes it more seriously than South Korea does. Their leader uh, still wants to get North Korea to the bargaining table. The Japanese scrap their pacifism doctrine saying, we're not going to deal with that. We want anti-missile systems. We want to rebuild our military. Uh, we're not dealing with that bullshit, and I don't blame them. Yeah. People here, I think, uh, people who are like the Antifa members or whatever, you don't live next to North Korea. You've probably also never been to North Korea. I still have the occasional person apologizing for the Kim Jong-un regime and saying, oh, things are actually better there because they have like metered taxis or, you know, they have a skyscraper. Whoop-de-doo. Yeah, there are taxis in Sierra Leone, too. It doesn't mean that their economy is stable. <laughs> it doesn't mean that it's first world. The fact that the North Korean economy would grow, well, yeah, no shit. The world economy in general is growing. Um, doesn't mean anything. It doesn't mean they're not a butcherous regime. And then you have people who say, well, the U.S. imprisons more people per capita than North Korea. Yeah, it's a, it's a big problem. And I oppose the police state and the drug war, too. Uh, but there's a little bit of a difference between imprisonment and then you get put in a rock mine for 20 years along with the, your entire family. Uh, and an individual is imprisoned for periods of time, uh, sometimes legitimately. There's an actual victim to their crime. It's a little bit different. Uh, yeah, I think that if they uh, execute you with an anti-air gun and blow your body and basically vaporize it, uh, I don't think we do that in this country. By the way, I oppose capital punishment in general, so... Uh, no problem there with the general claim. But North Korea, uh, I don't know of any nations that would remain on the sidelines if they actually tried to develop uh, delivery technology for atomic weapons beyond put it on a bomber, fly it over target, drop bomb, which is what they have to do right now. They could hit South Korea that way. They might hit Japan or China. They certainly couldn't hit us. They wouldn't have the range. They don't have anything to carry the weapon. Uh, close enough. They could, uh, I guess, strap it into a submarine and rig it to explode and then sail the submarine offshore like into Los Angeles area or something. It'd be kind of pointless. Uh, it wouldn't do very much. There'd be a little bit of fallout. Maybe uh, some big waves. It's probably about all it would do. We're not even talking about like, oh, it's a Castle Bravo sized weapon. It's an atomic weapon. It's old school. It's the kind we dropped on Hiroshima. In fact, it's not even quite that powerful. Uh, not exactly capable of ending the world. That's about all. Peace out.